In this project video, I'm going to show you how to design, build and test a low noise dual rail voltage supply that is perfect for high performance op amps. I'm Mark Harris, one of Altium's industry expert consultants. You can find a link to the blog post for this dual rail regulator in the description below. This power supply design creates positive and negative 4.8 volt rails from a 9 volt battery with a design load of 80 milliamps. The op amps I'm designing this regulator for have a maximum voltage span of 10 volts, so I want to allow a little leeway. On the negative supply side, I'm starting with a switched mode regulator IC from Analog Maxim, the Max 17578 which will offer us a relatively low noise negative supply that is fairly efficient under low load conditions. Generating a negative supply with a switching regulator is no more complex or challenging than any other step-down style regulator. The output from this power stage will be minus 5.5 volts, allowing us to further regulate it with an ultra low noise linear regulator. All of the component values have been calculated using the formulas in the extensive data sheet. I'm using an analog device's ADP7182 ultra low noise linear regulator as the output stage for the negative supply. It's adjustable and the data sheet claims noise figures well below what I will be able to measure. Importantly, it also claims high accuracy over varying load and temperature conditions. The positive regulator is a single stage utilizing another ultra low noise regulator from analog devices, the ADP7102. It's in the same family as the negative regulator, which allows us to use the same component values, ensuring I'll have a great match between the two. The noise for this regulator is even lower than the negative supply. So once again, it's going to be a challenge for me to verify the claims in the data sheet. On the negative supply side, the LC filter on the input to the linear regulator should remove all switching noise. I'm adding a zero ohm resistor across the linear regulator as the LC input filter might create a low enough noise rail by itself that I will not need the linear regulator at all. I'm adding a variant to the design, which will mark the zero ohm resistor as not fitted, ensuring it won't accidentally end up in the bill of materials or assembly outputs. I've created the schematic for the linear regulators to this point using fixed value resistors on the adjustment pins. I'm adding a trimmer pot to allow adjustment from 4.2 to 5.2 volts on each of the regulators. Ideally, this would be a multi-turn pot. However, mechanical constraints on this board only allow room for a single turn pot. As part of this regulator design, I also want to have a blinking low battery LED. So it'll be very obvious when the battery needs to be changed. To blink the LED, I'm building a relaxation oscillator with an op amp aiming for a frequency of about 1 Hz with a 50% duty cycle. A second op amp will detect the low voltage level, enabling the relaxation oscillator and blinking LED. With the schematic finalized, I can start the circuit board layout and routing. After adding the components to the board, I'm setting up my layer stack. The board will be 1 mm thick and both the internal planes will be ground referenced to minimize noise. I like to begin board layout by arranging the components as separate logical blocks. I'm starting with the battery holder, switch and power header as this will help define the size of the circuit board. Selecting components on the schematic sheet also selects the same components on the circuit board when cross select is enabled. This allows these components to be brought together using the Arrange Components Inside Area tool. With this strategy, I create an optimal arrangement of related components off the circuit board. Once I'm happy with the arrangement, I try to find space on the circuit board for the block to sit. 
This allows me to start with an optimal component layout for each block and only need to sacrifice my arrangement if there isn't enough space on the board. I'm trying to keep the switching regulator away from the linear regulators while also minimizing the distance between the power header and the linear regulator outputs. This should limit any noise from the switching regulator making it into the outputs. Even though this design is very low current, I like using polygons for routing the most critical nets on power rails and regulators. To further minimize noise, I'm heavily stitching the ground pores and planes together around any noisy parts in an attempt to further minimize noise in the system. Through the magic of video editing, I have my prototype circuit boards and components in hand, ready for assembly. I'm hand assembling the prototypes, so I start building a frame around the circuit board using some 3D printed surrounds to hold the board in place. After carefully aligning the stencil, I tape that to my surface as well. With a blob of GC10 paste on the stencil, I use my 3D printed squeegee to deposit paste on the board. Assembly is just a matter of working my way through all the component bags, placing parts on the board, and marking off the assembly drawing with a highlighter. To reflow the solder paste, I'm using a cheap hot air rework station and a silicon baking mat that prevents my ESD mat from overheating. This gives professional looking results in no time at all. I now have a completed prototype ready for testing. For the initial power up, I'm going to use my lab power supply rather than a battery. If there's a problem with the board or the assembly, the current limiting will save the components and allow me to fix the issue. Things are not looking so great. The low battery LED is on and the minus 4.8 volt LED is flickering. The supply is showing it is current limited without there being a short circuit. Allowing more current might resolve the issue. At 40 milliamps of current, everything seems to have settled down. I'm testing the rails with my multimeter using the test points on the board. The voltage rails both need to be tweaked to 4.8 volts, which is not unexpected. I'm beginning load testing on the positive rail at the 80 milliamp design current. With minimal voltage drop, I'm happy with the result and ready to dial it up to 200% load. Moving on to the negative rail and performing the same test, we can see a bit more voltage drop, but I'm still happy with the result. I'm also testing between the two rails as an op amp would be connected and performing the same tests. After load testing the supply at 200% of the design current for several hours, there were no issues and temperatures on the board were more than satisfactory. I can't leave the testing there, however. I need to have a look at things with my oscilloscope. I'm using a ground spring on my probes to keep the loop length as minimal as possible. As my scope can only go down to 500 microvolts per division and the displayed noise level of my scope is around 450 microvolts, we are certainly not going to be able to see 15 to 18 microvolts of noise these regulators should be producing without some sort of amplification. Therefore, I won't waste your time with too many oscilloscope views. A couple of things we do need to investigate with the oscilloscope is the switching of the minus 5.5 regulator and how the LC filter is performing. Starting out with no load on the regulator, I'm going to turn on the DC load set to 80 milliamps. 
we now have spikes from switching of around 27 millivolts. Adding a measurement for RMS voltage, the noise from the switch mode regulator is a little over two millivolts. Moving the probe to measure after the LC filter, it looks very messy, though the switching noise is gone and the RMS noise is lower. However, I certainly wouldn't want to run my precision op amp on this voltage supply. Measuring between the positive and negative rails, we can get an idea of the total system noise level. I've added two seconds of persistence to the traces and color grade to show the most frequent amplitudes. What I find quite interesting about this view is that the RMS voltage measurement is almost half what I measure when connecting the oscilloscope probe tip to ground with a resistor. Without investing in a different test setup, the best I can say is that this dual rail supply has about 250 microvolts RMS noise. I'm fairly certain it's lower than that, but I can't measure it. Either way, I'm quite happy with the regulator and it will be perfect for powering my next project utilizing three high performance op amps. You can find links to the Altium designer files for this project in the description below if you want to build one of your own. Thanks for joining me on this project video. We have more projects coming up. So make sure you subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications of new project videos from Altium.